I'm uh, Dr. Dwight Mullen. I'm a professor uh, retired of political science and a joint appointment in Africana studies. And um, we started the State of Black Asheville as an undergraduate research project in the fall of 2006. It was right on the heels of Hurricane Katrina. And I had uh, people who had been evacuated in class and it led to the conversation of what would happen if Hurricane Katrina hit Asheville. Who would be in the water? Who would be living at the Civic Center? And why? And we started looking at education and healthcare and eventually expanded to criminal justice and housing and eventually economic development. Yeah, and see, that's, that's the part that really, you know, the community access to the data, it seems as though it's contradictory. Who cares about the hard numbers? Um, it's so quantitative. It has all these graphs and charts. Who would be attracted to that? And actually what, I, what we were surprised to find is that in each of these public policy areas, ranging from housing to criminal justice to education, data existed, but wasn't necessarily at the core of policy. And so you had policymakers making policies in these areas that were not necessarily in response to the real data. And so when the students in their undergraduate research projects started looking hard at what was going on as outcomes from these, from these areas, we were, um, they were very surprised that there were disparities by race and by gender. I wasn't surprised by that, but I, what I was surprised at was the degree of the disparities and how those disparities were uh, rarely uh, accountable, folk were held accountable for it. Um, budgets were not responsive to it. And so the public accesses data can change all that. Um, everything from nonprofit activity to legislative and uh, council chamber and uh, county commission policies. I started out looking at the long game. The long game. I, I honestly wanted to know where we are going with this. Um, it's one thing to address the schools. It's another thing to have a comprehensive whole world look at what's happening with our community. And historically, you see, you see, this is the South, and the South has a long memory. Folk tell stories, and 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 families are are involved. And so I started thinking about connecting this, and it, it became really obvious once I did with the era of Jim Crow segregation. And so in the South, you know, we have real hardcore beginnings of it with lynchings at the turn of the century. And Buncombe County is included with that. And then you look at this forced violent segregation, this separation of the races in, in, in terms of where it was. And we find it in the schools, healthcare, housing, criminal justice, all these areas that resonate for decades and decades. And so what I'm hoping overall with the picture for Asheville and Buncombe County is to change that legacy, to begin addressing and looking at what equality really means, not just for equality of rights, but to have some type of justifiably um, um, equity when it comes to outcomes of public policies. Um, you, know, you know, we've agreed as a community to do things together. Uh, we, we're going to educate our children. We're going to live together. When we get sick, we're going to get treated. I mean, all those areas we've decided to do together. We should not tolerate disparities in the outcomes of those areas. We started doing this over 10 years ago, and um, for most of that time, we're pretty ignored. Folk, folk recognized that there were disparities and there, would be, there was a shudder whenever the students presented their papers on an annual basis on a campus. Um, the undergraduate research symposium, students presented it, people were shocked, standing room only, that kind of thing, but very little came out of it. Um, and, and part of it was that it, it was limited to the campus, the city and county were not involved, and there was very little private sector uh, recognition of what was going on. What the fellowship has done is created a third party 
that is responsive to the data in terms of we can't just let this sit here and do nothing. And because of that, it's made it more legitimate for the city council, actual city council, and for Buncombe County commissioners to look at it as the areas of major concern. And so individuals on each of those bodies have since had not just the data as justification, but now they have the fellowship to support that this third party also thinks it's important. And so it's given it momentum. It came up, there were two things. One is we didn't begin and there's no real documented history of formal policy that's segregated by environmental effects. And so environmental policy has become a major part, I think, of future research projects. And so future research projects are something that is still on the table. Another part, are um, I was not aware that it was as extreme as I thought it would be. But the disparities affect women in ways that uh, you just can't account for through general policy formulation. You have to have things that specifically address populations, and women are one of the primary populations that need to be addressed.